Okay. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, what about the equal value? Um, since we're dealing with these tangents, the one above this. It, it, this is a growing sentiment in the United States, and it's it's weird. You know. Um, yeah. There's a growing sentiment in the United States that if you're not working hard, you're somehow a thief, and you're just stealing from people, and you're everything that's wrong with the country, and everybody should be paid like the people who work hard, and everybody should just work hard, and there should be, it, it, it's basically just how it should be. That sounds like well, I, I, you know, it's not communism. It's, it's still capitalistic. It's a, you know, it, it, it's it's the eccentric blue versus white collar, and I've never agreed with that because it, it's it isn't blue collar versus white collar. You know, it, they're not enemies. <laughs> they need each other very much, uh, and <laughs> that's you know, it, it's you know, somebody who's being a white collar and thinks themselves above manual labor when it's called for. I got a big problem with that too, but the same problem with somebody who's like, I'm blue collar and I'm better than you white collar people and forgive me for putting very a stereotypical accents on that crap, but <laughs> I, I think it's, it's uh, saying that uh, blue collar is not hard working and then that the white collar are hard working is it's not necessarily true because you have. Well, to this is the exact opposite. This is saying um, white collar don't do any work, and that you know basically if you're getting paid for work you did a while ago, uh, uh, you know, or if you're, you know, ba basically uh, there's a there's a growing sentiment in the country that we want. It, here, here's the thing that's difficult to grasp about this. The further you get away from blue collar, the less of a guarantee of pay you have. I know that sounds crazy, but it happens to also be true. If you're the lowest of the gruntiest manual labor blue collar, you show up for an hour, rather, regardless of what happens, you show up, you get paid. Now, you're usually working. But not always. Sometimes, you know, the factory breaks down, uh, the d ditch you're supposed to be digging, uh, you know, it starts raining, uh, you're working with equipment that can't be operated when lightning strikes are going on, you know, it's like, but you're there, you're getting paid. You have a guarantee no matter what the fuck happens, you're going to get a check. Um, the further you get away from that, the most menial labor, the less of a guarantee you have that for X hours of showing up, you're going to get Y hours of pay. When you like get it, your capital. Yeah, when you get in the really high end of that, you have no guarantee of paycheck. I mean, honestly, I have no guarantee I'm going to get paid next month. Uh, I probably am because I'm doing the things I need to do to maintain my clients and maintain my business and everything else, but I have zero guarantee. All of my clients could go out of business, and I'm just fucked. And I'm going to have to live entirely off my savings and everything else and float that boat long enough to go find new clients and not st and not starve to death and pay all my bills because my bills, obligations, and everything else don't go away in the meantime. Uh, it's, so money keeps going out even though money stopped coming in. Um, it, it, and it's one of those, I'm like, um, I... I have no idea how you bridge the gap between those two. I just, and I, I'm not even sure the the sentiment is necessarily wrong because somebody shouldn't get paid for doing nothing. But where do you draw the line between the two? You know, it's. Well, it, it sounds like this could tie in a little bit to people having patents and copyrights forever. Yeah, that and that's actually where this comment that I posted here was made on. It was yeah, indirectly I, under that. I, that they should be here's kind of what I think that I don't think that patents should be limited. They have a use for individuals and small businesses, but for big businesses they don't have too much of a use behind just, you know, the having this over the competition. 
it's not like the innovation. You know, if someone gets, makes an idea, and they're a small, and they're just a super small business or an individual, and it's not patented, that idea can get stolen by big businesses, and they get never, no, they don't ever get notified for it. But that's not going to happen in a big business, and that doesn't really serve the purpose of a patent. Now, big businesses putting a lot of money into research and coming up with stuff, that's okay. I think that some kind of protections for that, but it shouldn't be as long as they get. And similar stuff with copyrights, that it should really be, you know, we do have classifications on what's a small business and individuals, and I think that uh, if you're just... I understand what you're saying. I have a real... I, I, I get really iffy about, you know, one set of rules for small business, one set of rules for big business, because it, it, you get into the situation there, well, okay, I'm small business. I can afford to invest $500,000. I'm big business. I can afford to invest billions of dollars. Uh, don't we both deserve the same rights on and control over recouping that cost. You know, what, what, it, why is it because I have more resources I should be allowed to do less with them? Or, it, 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 um, it, it, and the thing is people get into there and they're like, well, you already did the work, it has no value. Well, not necessarily. I, I mean, A, you do have to recoup the cost and charging the licensing fee. And stuff. I agree it shouldn't be limitless forever. You know, patents should not go on for 150, yada, yada, whatever years. You know, it's something reasonable and then it gets released in the public domain. I, I think for medications it's 15 years. I, 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 I would be fine actually with 50 years because that's... Are actually really weird. Uh, say, say that again. Medication patents are really weird how they work because after it, it, it's like after two years, they still have it patented, but they're forced to allow it. To they're consume. forced to allow generic. Right. Uh, so that that's it's kind of weird like that for medications. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, go ahead. Or on this, or you can go <coughs> no, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, on the subject of patents, uh, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with you guys saying that patents shouldn't be eliminated because I, I'm one of the people who thinks that they should be eliminated. And that, uh, the main reason being that, uh, say, the car, the, the original creators of the car, not, the, uh, not Henry Ford, but the original people who created the car, not for production use, but they pretty much had the right to patent the idea in general. I mean, now you have patents for cars, of course, but they're, they're very specific patents. Yeah, I, I, on the note you're getting at there, and that, that, that is the, the whole rub of the patent debate in and of itself, I am not for abolishing patents and copyrights. I am for due diligence. You should not be able to patent I have patented the color blue in all 250 million variations of blue. No, I have this specific, unique implementation. If you can do it a different way, good for you. This is my way. I control that one. But the problem, the problem with this is that you assume that the judge or the, the patent office worker is understands what they're looking at and is exactly. able to tell the difference yes and that is where the weakness in the whole system is right now they're able to be in fact and uh, this is a case for for legal ethics really I, 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 I talking with some patent attorneys does make my skin crawl there are really ethical ones who um, are very adamant about ethical patents and not bamboos and so on. And then you got ones that are like, well, you see, the trick is we just have to write this to convince them that uh, we basically have to trick the patent office into approving it. And they think this is a good thing. They're like, well, it's, it's, you know, it's the law allows for it. I'm just, I'm just doing what the law says I have to do to get this approved. I'm like, okay, if you're having to bamboozle the patent office and trick them 
into not realizing that the color blue is the color blue? Don't you think that's a pattern that shouldn't be approved in the first place? Oh no, you see, I, I just have to convince them that that sky isn't blue and that and that blue is indigo, and and, and then I, I invented it. Uh, uh, but I, you know, and the and the patent office doesn't have the resources to combat that. It's personally, I would not be against. Uh, figuring out which lawyers have this loose set of ethics and disbarring them. <laughs> well, I have, I have a question for the person that believes that we shouldn't have patents. So, um, if I create an idea, and I'm not talking about creating, if I actually create some new idea that people haven't thought of before, and I wish to profit of it, off it, but to do this, I have to go to venture capital. Uh, how do I, without patents, uh, benefit off this idea that would benefit humanity without, you know, without a patent that protects venture capitalists from just taking it himself? Uh, I think what, I mean, a sort of temporary solution, because we do have a very screwed up system in this respect, that what we could do is have patents apply for uh, not a very short period of time, but a period of time which is enough to when it passes, it's still viable and can still benefit everyone. So well, that, that's, that, that's, that's basically what I believe in. I mean, and, and, well, and then the debate you get into there, if you concede that point, is how long is enough time? I mean, you know, if the investment is ten billion dollars and you can only have a patent for five years, well, that's that means you have to recoup two point a minimum of two point five billion dollars a year. Uh, that's a pretty damn expensive product. <laughs> it, it's, it, these companies who spend these ten billion dollars to discover one thing that that doesn't mean that this one product is worth ten billion dollars because they weren't specifically trying to discover this one thing. I don't think that research and development, we should really work so much about having, it's not. Well, it, it, well and I, I'm using that as an abstract example. The reality is research and development is for the sake of research and development. We got Viagra from heart medicine, you know, it's like, <laughs> no, yeah, it's like, it's like, well, what are your side effects? Well, I have a boner. I haven't had a boner for a while, but I have a boner, and I still have it after four hours. Oh, okay. Um, I think we have another application for this drug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, anyway, so there, we need some system to protect people who have new ideas, who are not big companies that can market this. Uh, you know, because if a big company, if say, if I I make an idea, and Microsoft also implements my idea. Well, I, as Google, have the money to market this, to make it different, to make it better, enough that once I have the market share, I can make money off people's trust uh, rather than having the new product. So the yeah. amount of patent is really the amount that you need people's trust for that stuff. Well, and then it's the other thing of, at the end of the day, what, what, what you're doing with the patent process, and the patent process is really being used to do the exact opposite today, but the idea behind it is that you protect the innovation so that you can benefit from it. You know, the perfect example, because, the okay, say, I, say something gets made that makes either innovates and and innovation really is what patents for protecting more than invention I, I create an innovation that makes something an order of magnitude better in which people are either uh, going back to like where we started there they have to do less effort to get the same thing it does something for them or they're able to get more done with the same amount of effort um, and Basically, if I didn't have the patent, the moment I show my idea off, everybody just copies it. You know, uh, and, and, and th th that's wrong because I, I spent, I, you know, if I choose 
to just give it away. That's my choice. But if I want to get something out of that, uh, that's not wrong. You know, that's me going, I figured this out and I would love to share it. But I have this tendency to want to eat. Uh, so let's arrange some type of barter for that thing. You know, I eat, you get my innovation and have, don't have to work as hard anymore. Works great for both of us. You know, right. foundation of all trade. Um, and without the patent, I have no way to enforce that. You basically go, well, thanks for the idea. Go starve now. Uh, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I still need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's that. I, that's why I'm saying, you know, small businesses, stuff like that. Big businesses don't have the problem where they need to eat. So there's yeah, there's, but the people who are working for them do. That's why I said, like I said, I have the real hard line between drawing that between the two because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If the company uh, is spending enough of their profit expecting to create an innovation uh, more so and expecting it to sell where they would go bankrupt if they didn't, that's a problem with the company. Uh, I, I would say that uh, going on what you said, you said that um, if there are comp big companies aren't uh, you know, struggling uh, for, for their food or whatever, you know, and uh, I mean, that's not necessarily true. I mean, you can have a company that, that's has like a five million dollar net worth, and then they they have a very low profit margin because their expenses almost outnumber their profits. I mean, it exists. And it exists more than you think, actually, in a lot of industries. There's a lot of companies that are just barely making it by, even though they're considered large. Yeah, but the the thing uh, I want to touch on is. For specific things, I don't think, I, I mean, in, in, even with the system in place where it only lasts a certain number of time, with certain things, uh, patents should be abolished. For example, uh, when the uh, vaccine, or when penicillin was made. There are three think... things, uh, there's a list, I know what you're talking about, there's a list of three things. Food, medicine and resource management. Now resource management gets really, really tricky, but I, 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 uh, I don't agree in patenting a technique for utilization of resources. I, I agree with the technique for production, for some, but not the resource itself. I can't patent gasoline. I can patent the tool I use to create the gasoline from whatever I'm creating it from. What but about I, if we had it like medicines where there's forced generics? I, I, um, if, you, if you want to give a temporary monopoly for the one who figured it out for like a period of two to five years and then yes, forced generics, okay, yeah, but that's the same thing. It's like, because it's, we do have the situation right now when we are trying to pass an international coalition on that where basically we're going to give certain entities control of seeds because they patented the genome of that seed. Okay, you want to grow wheat? You got to go through them. That's wrong. Yeah. Also, um, adding on to that list of three, I don't think software should have patents either. I disagree. This is from somebody who is a firm proponent of open source and GPL and so on and so forth, but I do actually agree in the concept of software patents. However, I think the patent office needs to hire some people who actually understand software because you, um, the reality is if you're creative enough with software, you can create two pieces of software that serve as the same widget that have nothing to do with each other. You know, one's doing it with a combination of do loops, the other's a combination of for and while loops. One of them is a thousand lines of code, the other one's 250. They both do the same job. They're different animals. They work differently. They just happen to get the same job done. I believe both should be able to coexist and not violate each other. 
you should be able to patent your very specific solution in terms of software to how you solve this problem, not that you solved the problem. Anybody okay. else can come up with a different way to solve it, can string together the four main components of software, uh, if-else statements, logic, loops. Well, think okay, well, uh, think about it this way. A patent is for an invention, so a machine, or, 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 or an innovation. I give you, I can give you a perfect case example of a tangible good that if you use your logic for software shouldn't have been patentable and it's actually a hallmark case. They even made a movie out of it. The intermittent uh, windshield wiper. He didn't invent the windshield wiper. He innovated the circuitry necessary to make it go but software's the same thing. Just because it's an in, just it, 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 it is a tangible invention in that it is lines of code. There was effort to create it. Things were sought. I, 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 you, you did do work. You did create something. It, it, it's, uh, it, it, software creation is an art. It, it is as difficult as creating mechanical uh, stuff. Why doesn't copyright solve that? If I have software, I can give out software and people, if they take my actual code, I can still sue them without the patent. They, they can't modify it either. So if, they don't, if they don't, if they don't, uh, if they don't... Oh, 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 uh, okay, um, to do what, I, I, I will agree that, I will agree with that solution but however, I'm not sure you're going to like what you'd have to do to do it. You have to strengthen copyright law even more than it is now. Because the reality is copyright law doesn't quite necessarily give you what you need. And with software, it's, it's difficult. Uh, because if, of, like, if they don't have the source code for it and they implement the exact same thing, they, they, if, even if they implement it the way I did, if they didn't know how I did it, how is that really a breach of my idea? They had to go through. They just knew what they just knew what their end product was, uh, but they still had to try to implement it, just like I did. So where's where's the need for the patent in stopping them? Because what the patent does it stops them from having that same kind of implementation. You know, it's like okay. So you want to turn it all over to copyright, but then here's the thing: how do I Stop. Uh, how do I stop the use with copyright? Copyright, I can. Ba uh, I I basically just uh, do a uh, do a takedown, but I I have a difficult time in stopping the use. Patent is different. Okay. Well, think about it this way. Uh, software is written. It is typed. A text editor which is compiled. So this fact alone should uh, should make it obvious that it's it should be governed under the laws of copyright rather than a patent because. Okay, but okay, but let me play devil's advocate there. Uh, I, 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 I will agree with that position, but do you really want to strengthen copyright law to be so rigid to the point that you uh, it, it's acting almost as patent law? Because right now, right now plagiarism, why it has penalties, they're rather mild with the exception of certain cases like the DMCA and, and so on where you've committed piracy. Uh, plagiarism is not this uh, 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 crime. It's, oh, you plagiarized. Uh, you know, y'all can go to civil court if you feel like it. Um, patent, on the other hand, it, it, the punitive is a little more cut and dry. Uh, well, I, I think that if, that a work that can be duplicated uh, virtually in an almost unlimited number of times, because I can't say unlimited, uh, shouldn't be subject to laws that that govern hardware, because since 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 you can't. 
it, copyright and patent a physical invention, neither should you be able to patent and uh, copyright a specific written work. So I don't think that you should be able to patent a certain subject of books rather than the same way I don't think you should be able to patent I don't agree. Uh, you're, you're missing what I said. No, you should not be able to patent the abstract execution. You should have to patent the specific because uh, if, if, if we make copyright law, like you're saying, where it's just covered by copyright, that means parodies just became uh, uh, unacceptable. But it, it can't be both under patent law and copyright law. Does it make sense? Um, there are different areas of law that does actually make sense because um, copyright is dealing more with uh, the uh, copy and trade side and the, and the patent side is now what patent is supposed to be no I should not be able to patent touch I should be able to patent a very specific unique implementation of touch and honestly uh, actually uh, I, I just undermined my own argument there you're, you're, you're right what it should be is a combination of trademark and copyright in which you copyright the code and you trademark the specific execution of it, which would serve the same protection but abolish the patents you're talking about. Yeah, and plus, what, what, what's, what's uh, unique about the, the technological and software world is that um, when, with software, something generic 20 years ago can be considered pretty much... Um, the usual in present time. For example, um, when operating systems were first introduced, I mean, th they were something that was sort of unique. I mean, beforehand, you had very specific um, uh, kernels and very specific software for certain computers. So, in just a short margin of time, something that was considered unique and something that that could be patented potentially uh, could be considered generic now. So saying that you can patent something that's specific now uh, could potentially become something that's uh, 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 well. Regardless of how you deal with that issue, I would say adamantly that software patents should have a lifespan of no more than a decade. Because at the rate technology moves, it's particularly software. If so, if your software is more than a decade old, you're talking about something that's fundamental, foundational technology to the way things are done today. In which case, ex further extension of that protection is actually holding up the industry as a whole. I will agree adamantly with that, regardless of how you solve it. Because, I mean, the reality is, like you're saying, if we had allowed patenting and trademarking and copywriting of things like C and C++ and, and, and so on, like we do today, the computer industry of today could not exist. Yeah. Uh, 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 Dennis Ritchie would be the richest man in the world. He would be a trillionaire. He's dead. His estate would be worth trillions, and we would not have half the technology we have today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, back back when C wasn't uh, put in full use, it was considered that was something unique because it was just invented. So if if he had the right to, or if, if he patented that, then we would be using uh, probably some form of Lisp dialect. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> not really. <laughs> not for everything. It has its use cases, but that's that's another. That's another. Thing. That that would be very geekish of us. Yeah, I was just using those as an example. I, I, God, I hear some of these old timers talk about shit. I mean, apparently, 
apparently with some of the really fundamental computing languages, you you could actually modify stuff without a compiler. You could just like put pointers in when you were doing like the punch card systems. You could just put pointers in. And, and some of the old gurus, like you listen to a thought, you just like you try to think, how would I even do that with modern computing? They're they're putting pointers in because they couldn't afford a compiler to just go around stuff and do other stuff and do things. I'm like, can you even do that with modern computing? I don't even think that's possible. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, what what are you talking about? Like having code that executes something and instead of actually compiling code, having pointers point in a different order to different executed code? Uh, uh, along the lines, yeah, but just doing it on the fly without without any compiling. In other words, you, you create code that, you, you create things that do this, but you don't actually compile it. You just put pointers in and put new things in. You could do that, yeah. You could do that and see. Okay. So yeah, and, and now it, it, but yeah, we we don't need to go down that road because we'll get into the whole C versus C plus plus thing. And it's it's a little bit off from what we're completely talking about, but it, it's uh it's relevant to it in that I'm of the belief that if you don't use a patent for a significant amount of time, that you shouldn't be able to keep it in the fact that it's done. I, I, I agree adamantly with that, and there is actually a case precedent for that. The escalator. And it's, 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 it's in copyright law, not, it's, uh, not trademark. It's in copyright and trademark, but it's, it, it, they're related, and the, uh, I agree that that should apply to patents, too. I, actually, no, there's a case for patents, too. Uh, Palo Alto Research Center. Uh, because they were trying to claim first invent and stuff, and the courts ruled you had no interest in really doing stuff with this. So yeah, yeah I, you I you do. don't you don't get it. And with the copyright and trademark, the escalator, the guy who had our company, I forget I forget if it was an individual or an entity, but they owned the term escalator, and they let all the movable staircases be escalators until there's one people they didn't like use the term escalator and they said no 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 that's not we don't like that that can't be an escalator and they tried to enforce their thing and the the court basically said for seven years you've been letting people have escalators and now you want to complain in this one case uh go uh, away <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, but, the thing yeah. is, is but this kind of judgment you, you have to assume that again uh human intelligence exists Uh, understands the case, yeah, yes. Exactly. It's very specific with these sorts of things. Um, well, that, the, to be perfectly honest, Xavier, that's the job of the lawyers to make sure the judge understands the case. I'm glad that we agree that people having patents and not using them does nothing but hold back that possible innovation. Yeah, it, it, uh, the hoarding of patents, just the thing. Uh, uh, well, and see, this is the, the thing. That we have these patents that nobody uses, and when a company wants to sue the other, they'll look for all the patents that they don't use that they might be able to apply. Well, I, 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 indirectly, though, and uh, uh, getting into last thoughts on this topic, that is one of the things, unfortunately, that is why we have so many patent suits because we we kind of already do have that system. We're in a sue them or lose your patent system. You can't, like, let it go. If you let it go that there's even a, a hint of violation, you may lose the ability to even have your patent. So with, this is why, you know, we, I mean, we, we've, we've done this in, uh, in the Linux shows and in the tech shows and the other stuff. But we've said, oh, why are you picking on this little person who's not even really attacking you? Because they don't have a choice. If they don't do it, they lose their patent, trademark, or copyright. They're forced to sue them and attack them. Which uh, creates its own problem. Both ways you have a problem. You know, you have, you have multi-million dollar, billion dollar companies being forced 
to attack people they don't really want to attack because if they don't, they lose their patent, copyright, and trademark. And, and, and it, 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 that is one problem I would like to solve. You know, the ability to have a... Uh, there, there's got to be a way to go... Uh, look, we're going to let this one go, but we reserve the right to still attack anybody else if we consider them competition. You know, we're entering into a favorable licensing agreement to not be an asshole. Doesn't weaken your patent, copyright, or trademark. It's not that you're not using it. It's that you're not wanting to attack somebody because you don't think it helps you. Uh, uh, okay. I guess moving on. 